What's up YouTube? This is your boy John from Project Ellsworth and I am back with you today to give you my rankings of all seven of Rob Zombie's films. Run Rabbit! From 2003's House of a Thousand Corpses all the way up to and including 2019's Three from Hell, Rob Zombie has been dazzling us with his beautiful cinematography, his interesting casting choices, and he's even been ruffling a few feathers with his controversial script writing. He has given us iconic characters such as the quick-witted Captain Spaulding and quite possibly the scariest Michael Myers that has ever been put on film. He's also provided us with a few ruthless killers such as Otis Driftwood and Doomhead. Some people love him, some people hate him. A lot of people could live with him or without him. I think he's all right. This is my ranking of the seven Rob Zombie feature films. Coming in at number seven is 2013's The Lords of Salem. God does not spare angels when they sin. For me, I think that this may be Rob Zombie's most beautifully shot film. You have a lot of uh, shots of long hallways, uh, a lot of color. Yeah, it's really cool the way that the contrast that he provides you with in this. You have bright neon lights with very dark surroundings and the neon lights uh, shining off of a glossy floor, like a marble floor. I know that there's a scene in this movie where you have a, you're in a big grand room the background is all red and gold, so you have these beautiful bright colors, and at the center of that, you get a picture of um, Sherry Moon Zombie's character, and she is head to toe black and white. So the contrast between the red and gold and the black and white is quite breathtaking, actually. But for all that stuff that looked absolutely gorgeous, I absolutely hated this movie. I thought that the, the, the story was incomprehensible. I didn't enjoy it at all. It was very difficult for me to follow. I don't know if it was the story itself or that it, I simply found it to be so uninteresting that I could barely keep track of what was going on. Um, there's a scene in this movie where Sherry Moon's character, Jeff Daniel Phillips' character, and Ken Foray's character are working at a radio station and they're having a conversation at the radio station. They're having a conversation when they're walking out of the radio station. And it's just the silliest conversation you ever heard in your life. Um, there are way too many scenes in this movie of dirty, naked old ladies. It's just, I don't know why in the world he would put that on film. I think you can get the point of witches and old witches across without putting that in front of our eyes. Um, I didn't enjoy that at all. I think that the only part of this movie that I thought was really cool, that was really scary, I mentioned it when I did my review of this film um, on its own, is there's a scene where Sherry Moon's character walks into her kitchen and she turns on the light. Directly behind her is a witch standing in the corner and it sincerely makes your the, the hair on your arm stand up. I, I, it skeeved me out and freaked me out so bad. I thought it was incredible. And the crazy thing about it is the witch doesn't breathe, the witch doesn't move, the witch doesn't do anything. And that single scene gave me the creeps and that's the only part of this movie that I actually liked. There's another scene in this movie when, when we're talking about the stuff that I thought was beautifully shot. It's Sherry Moon with, she's got long blonde dreads in this movie. She's got her long blonde dreads. She's in that corridor where you have the neon lights behind her with the glossy shiny floor and she's flinging her head around and she's riding a goat. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I didn't get this movie at all. I didn't enjoy any part of this movie. That's why this movie's coming in at seven for me. I thought this movie was terrible. Coming in at number six is the 2009 film Rob Zombie's H2. I thought that the beginning of this movie was absolutely fantastic. I'd say it's probably the opening between 20 minutes and a half hour of this movie. I didn't time it out, I should have, but I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, when, he, when we pick up the story, it is right where the events of the 2007 Rob Zombie film end. You see Sheriff Brackett driving down the road in his squad car, 
and he sees Lori walking in the middle of the road. It's pitch black outside, but he sees her. Slowly pulls up behind her. She's covered in blood. He gets her in the car. He gets her to the hospital. When she gets to the hospital, she's walking around. She's seeing the nurses in there. Michael Myers attacks. It's scary as hell. It chases her outside. It's raining. It just the, it, the tension that is built into this small piece of filmmaking was absolutely phenomenal. And then Lori wakes up screaming. The story jumps forward quite a bit of time, and this movie takes a severe nosedive. After that opening sequence, there's really not a, le a lot to like about this movie for me. I thought that the Lori character was spectacular in Halloween. I think in this movie, I think that the, he's basically just portrayed her as an asshole. She treats everybody like crap. She treats her, her psychiatrist like crap. She treats Sheriff Brack and Annie that she lives with like crap. Um, there's a character in here called Captain Clegg. He's terrible. There's a strip club owner in this movie. He's terrible. One of Lori's friends is walking around dressed like a character from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. She's terrible. Michael Myers is now a hobo. That's terrible. Dr. Loomis, this is the most unforgivable thing for me. Dr. Loomis in this movie is a completely unlikable jerk. Not to mention the ghost of Michael Myers' mother and that white horse. Oh, that goddamn horse. So not only do we have a Sherry Moon zombie ghost in this movie, she's accompanied by a giant horse, white horse in this movie, and then they are soon joined by a young, clown-costumed Michael Myers. This kid's not even the kid who was Michael Myers in the first Halloween movie. This movie was filmed two years after that one, and they said that Daig, the kid who was in the first movie, aged too much in that two-year span to use him. Come on. Oh, whatever. I, I don't know how much I buy that either, but whatever. If that's what it is, it is what it is. But I don't know. I, maybe I just don't get it. She's a ghost. The horse is a symbol. And I don't know what the hell that little kid is. I don't know if that's supposed to be his subconscious or his unconscious mind or whatever it is. It can't be his ghost because Michael's still alive. I don't know. I just thought all of that was nonsense. It completely took me out of the Michael Myers character and story. And, and that, this movie just didn't do it for me. I thought it was awful. Coming in at number five is 2016's 31. Now you may think you see a grease painted performer sitting before you, but trust me, I'm not here to brighten your dismal day. I am here to end your miserable life. This movie, well, I had mixed feelings about this movie. I thought that the opening scene of this movie was absolutely amazing with Richard Brake as Doomhead speaking to a guy that he's getting ready to kill. I thought the writing was brilliant. I thought that his acting was brilliant. I thought that his cadence and his performance were brilliant in this scene. Immediately after this scene, we get roughly 20 minutes of the rest of the characters in a van being typical Rob Zombie trailer trash, disgusting, repulsive immoral human beings but if you get past that it's not too bad i like this game of survival that they had to play in this movie um there were a few characters inside of the game that i wasn't real crazy about one real nuts about the nazi midget and i really thought that the clowns were kind of gross and, and disgusting but uh, for the most part after you get past the first third of this movie i did enjoy it um, i'm kind of on the fence with this movie but i'm leaning towards liking it um, I love the very, very beginning of this movie. I really dug the end of this movie where Doomhead reappears again. And although a lot of people don't like it, when this movie ends, they kind of do the same thing that they did in one of his other movies. They play a classic rock song, or he plays a classic rock song, Rob Zombie, I mean, almost all the way through, if not all the way through. I don't remember exactly. Um, but they play uh, Dream On by Aerosmith. There's a scene where that, mo that song starts and plays damn near, if not all the way through, with two characters basically standing in the road looking at each other. I didn't mind that ending. A lot of people I've seen and read didn't care for that very much. They, he was just basically sucking up uh, view time, is what all that was. But it, it is what it is, and I didn't mind it at all. I actually kind of enjoyed it. So I didn't love this movie, but I certainly didn't hate this movie either. I definitely liked it more the second time that I watched it, so this movie kind of falls in the middle for me. Coming in at number four is the 2019 film, Three from Hell. Hello, America. Did you miss me? Three from Hell. 
right off the bat, you gotta know that the three from hell does not include Captain Spaulding. Sid Haig was sick when they filmed this movie, and right after this movie came out, unfortunately, he passed away. Rest in peace, Sid Haig, man. I love that dude. So the third character in this movie is now portrayed by Richard Brake. His name is Winslow Foxworth Coltrane. So you have Winslow, uh, Baby, and Otis. They're your three from hell, not Captain Spaulding. He's not in there. I would say Captain Spaulding is probably in this movie for about three minutes total. Three, maybe four. He doesn't get very much screen time in this movie. So yeah, Richard Brake is now the third member from Three From Hell. Uh, I thought that this movie, this is another Rob Zombie movie that I thought was definitely better the second time I watched it. When I saw this movie in the movie theater, I walked out of there. I did a review for this when it came out, like the day after it came out and I saw it. And I gave a pretty unsatisfactory review for this movie. But I went back and watched it again as a refresher because it had been so long. And I actually kind of liked this movie. I thought it was decent. I thought that Richard Brake, if his character was portrayed by somebody else, I may not like it as much, but I just like him. I think that he's a fantastic actor. Um, the baby character in this movie, I really wasn't, it wasn't really appealing to me that she was completely batshit crazy in this movie. I mean, I think from House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects, you could label all of the characters in these movies as crazy. But after she got locked up and put away, she really went crazy, and I wasn't nuts about that at all. The vast majority of this movie takes place in Mexico. They decide to jump the border to get away from the cops. And now they're in Mexico pissing people off. And they, they are over there. They wind up in, like, gunfights with the, the cartel who are all dressed in masks. They look like masked wrestlers, like luchadors. I think it's fairly obvious that he didn't have a big budget on this movie. And you, it, you definitely can tell. But with all that being said, I still think that this movie was pretty beautifully shot. I thought the scenery was great. The sets were great. Um, I think that the characters, for the most part, had a good performance in, these, in this movie. Sherry Moon's character, at the beginning of the movie, like I said, she was completely batshit crazy. But by the time you got to the end of the movie, she didn't seem so crazy anymore. So whatever, man. This is another one. I didn't love this movie and I didn't hate this movie. And that's why this one is also in the middle for me. This one's actually right in the middle for me. Coming in at number three is 2005's The Devil's Rejects. What police have uncovered words can't describe it. Body parts, human skulls, and a mass grave under the crawl space of the house. I am the devil. And I am here to do the devil's work. I know that this movie is probably number one on a lot of Rob Zombie fans lists, but it's number three for me. I definitely like this movie a lot. I liked it quite a bit. Obviously, I like it more than four of his other films. Um, I really enjoyed the way that this movie began with the um, with the shootout out front of their house or in, in their house. I thought that was really, really well done. Um, I liked I enjoyed the story of this movie. Uh, Captain Spaulding was fantastic. Baby and Otis, they were great. I, I really liked just about everything about this movie. The, uh, there's a couple things that I was not crazy about. The Sheriff Wydell character. I like the idea of that character um, coming back and seeking revenge for his brother being killed in the previous House of a Thousand Corpses movie. I thought that that idea was fantastic. But I was not real crazy about William Forsyth's, Forsyth's job in this movie. I thought that he was a little bit too over the top which made it a little bit too unbelievable for me. Um, I, I just didn't like the way that he carried that role out. And although I really didn't like his role as that character, I absolutely loved the way that he died, which really didn't have anything to do with him. Getting his neck broken from behind and thrown on the ground like he was nothing, like he was a piece of trash, which in this movie he kind of is portrayed like that. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the other thing in this movie, that I think there's only two things in this one that I didn't care for. That Sheriff Waddell character, I was not crazy about him. And I thought that the scene in the hotel room was a little bit too much. Um, I just did. I, I don't. That kind of stuff. I don't. I don't get any entertainment out of that stuff. I just don't like it. The the abuse of women and to the mistreatment of women. I, I just. I did not care for that scene at all. I'll leave it at that. But what this film did include was one of my two favorite scenes that Rob Zombie ever shot in his seven movie career, and it is the ending of this movie. Like I said, in uh, 31. That film ends with the entire song uh, Dream On playing. This movie ends with the entire uh, Freebird song playing. And I thoroughly enjoyed this. I, I love that song. I love that scene. I like the way that it ended. I liked everything about this. And it, 
when this movie ended, you thought, well, that's got to be it. There's not going to be a third film, right? So The Devil's Rejects is a movie that, it's one of three that Rob Zombie has made that I really, really loved. Coming in at number two is 2007's Halloween. Three people brutally murdered and a 10-year-old boy being held in custody. So as much as I actually really, really enjoyed this movie, there were a few things that I was not real crazy about, so let me get them out of the way first. Uh, I enjoyed the idea of providing a little bit of backstory for the Michael Myers character. I know that part of the mystique of the Michael Myers character is you don't know why he's doing what he's doing, but I like the idea that Rob Zombie had of giving you a bit of backstory for this kid that showed that he was neglected and abused and so forth. But what I did not like was I did not like overall the scenes with his family. I thought it was just too noisy and too loud and aggressive. It was just very unpleasurable to listen to all that screaming and yelling and cussing and I just didn't get, I didn't enjoy that at all. And with that being said, that's primarily, the primary reason I did not like that was William Forsythe's job as Ronnie in this movie. I, maybe that's what Rob was going for, so maybe he did a good job at that role, but I absolutely hated that character. I hated him to death. So now Ronnie, William Forsythe, he was Wydell, and he was Ronnie, and I hated both of those characters. I also strongly disliked Judith Myers. By the time he stabbed her in this movie, I was glad he stabbed her. I didn't like her at all either. And the part of this movie that I absolutely hated was the rape scene that took place in this movie. I, it, completely unnecessary. I don't understand why he had to put this in here. I, I think that it's just, it's something that did not need to be put in this movie at all. I, it served no purpose for me. I mean, come on, you're a storyteller. You write horror movies, you write music. You're, you're obviously an artistic guy. You can come up with a better way to get Michael out of this place than putting something like that in, in this movie. It was absolutely unnecessary. All right, so let's get on to the things that I actually really did like about this movie. I thought that Scout Taylor Compton was fantastic in this movie as Laurie. I loved Malcolm McDowell as Dr. Loomis. I thought that Michael Myers was amazing in this movie. I thought Tyler Maine's portrayal of that character was fantastic. And I think that he very well may be the scariest Michael Myers that we've ever had. Um, I like the fact that Rob Zombie cast Daniel Harris in this movie. She played Jamie in, in Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. And I thought it was really cool to bring her back in this movie. I think that next to Halloween 2, of all of Rob Zombie's movies, this is the one that gets the, the most emotion out of people. People either absolutely love his remake of Halloween or absolutely hate his remake of Halloween. I loved his remake of Halloween. Halloween 2 is another story, but this one, I thought he did a fantastic job with this movie. There's only one movie left. You know what it is. Coming in at number one is the 2003 film House of a Thousand Corpses. Howdy, folks. You like blood, violence, and freaks of nature? The Boogeyman is real. <laughs> and you found him. House of a Thousand Corpses. Hope you like what you see! Remember I said that the closing of The Devil's Rejects is one of my two favorite things that Rob Zombie ever filmed? The other one is the opening scene of House of a Thousand Corpses. When Captain Spaulding is in his museum of madness and mayhem, murder and madmen, when he's in his store and they come, uh, those dudes come in there to rob the place, and he just doesn't give a damn what them guys are saying to him, and he's confronted by all this. I just think that that was absolutely brilliant. It was creepy, and it was scary, and it was funny, and it was aggressive. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And then we follow that up with our main characters coming to that store, and they're in there cleaning up the blood off of the floor, and he's wearing that dirty white hot dog shirt, and he's talking to our main characters like they're a couple of idiots. It's just Sid Haig, it's just primo Sid Haig in this movie. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. That was definitely my favorite thing that Rob Zombie ever filmed. And naturally, it was the first thing that he ever filmed. Well, I don't know if it's the first thing he filmed sequentially, but it's the first thing that we see on film. You know what I meant. The main thing I think that I like about this movie is this feels more like a horror movie. It's a lot less white trash rednecky and much more horror movie. Um, so the storytelling in this I like a lot more. This movie almost feels like 
several different parts of a movie put together, almost like short stories combined together to make one big movie. You got the the monsters in mayhem or the monsters and Mad Men museum at the beginning. You got the robbery scene at the beginning. You got the underground Doctor Satan stuff. You got all the stuff that takes place in the house that kind of feels like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre type feeling. It just the filmmaking and the storytelling and the the cinematography and the script, just everything about this movie to me was better than everything else that this guy's ever done. And without a doubt, this guy has done a total of seven movies and he has had tons of characters in his movies, bit parts, B characters, main characters. He's had tons of stuff in here, in his movies. But without a doubt, my favorite character that he has ever come up with in his entire filmography is Captain Spaulding. I have no doubt whatsoever that it, that's not based on that character as much as it is Sid Haig. Sig's portrayal of that character was just out of this world, and I don't think that Rob ever had another character in any of his movies that were as good as that one. I often wonder if this movie is a perfect example of that whole, you had your whole life theory. They say that about bands, where their first, their debut album is usually their best album because they had their entire life to come up with the ideas and craft that album. I'm wondering if this movie is the same sort of idea with Rob Zombie. I know that Rob Zombie is a lifelong lover of horror movies. I've been a Rob Zombie fan for a very long time, so I know quite a bit about Rob Zombie. Um, so I'm wondering if he had been thinking about this movie for many, many years, and he came up with these ideas over a long period of time, which allowed him to craft them and mold them and reshape them, which is why this movie turned out to be so friggin' spectacular. Although I like a lot of his other stuff, I just, for me, in my opinion only, obviously, I don't think that he ever put anything out nearly as good as House of a Thousand Corpses. So after all of that, I guess I'm kind of hot and cold with Rob Zombie. I'm kind of middle of the road. I absolutely loved three of his movies. I kind of liked two of his movies. I really didn't like one of his movies, and I absolutely hated one of his movies. So wherever that puts me, I guess that's where I am. I, I know that as long as Rob Zombie's putting movies out, I'm going to watch them. I actually, right before I came down here to film this, I looked on IMDb and I looked on Rob Zombie's website to see if he was working on anything currently, and neither one of them had any information that he was doing anything right now. But I know that I'm not somebody who typically just shuts somebody out and, and turns them off if I don't like something that they did, movie-wise anyway. Um, and I absolutely love horror movies. That's the bottom line. So if Rob Zombie puts out another horror movie, or if Rob Zombie puts out 10 more horror movies, I'm sure I'll go see them, I'm sure I'll buy them, and I'm sure I'll review them. I'll give anything that this guy does a chance. So what's your stance on all of this? Do you like Rob Zombie's movies or don't you like Rob Zombie's movies? Which ones do you like, which ones do you not like? What is your ranking? Leave all that stuff down below in the comments section and we can talk about it. All right, folks, that is going to do it for my ranking of Rob Zombie's filmography. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you have been enjoying my content, do me a huge personal favor. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and then ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day and thank you for watching.